So I bring greetings from her and um, the church God has set us over. All right. This year we are looking into, I'm sure you've looked into it again and again. So I just want to bring a little insight, a little, um, um, a little, just to add to the loads of revelation and insight and grace you've received with regard to being great. So this tonight I'd just like to share with us on, um, I mean, from God's word. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your presence tonight. We appreciate the liberty of the spirit. We thank you, Father, for your children waiting on you. Your word says they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength and mount up with wings as eagles. We are persuaded in your word, no matter what surrounds us in the natural, that you are able to take us from strength to strength and from glory to glory, even as we mount up with wings as eagles. Lord, we ask of you tonight, as we look into your word and declare your counsels, and we call on you, we ask that you download grace, you bring forth insight, bring forth understanding, that as many as hear this in this place and hear this hereafter, the same grace made available as we teach and decree and declare tonight will be made available even as people listen to this and view this hereafter. We thank you, Father, for answered prayers because we are prayed with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. And the people of God say, believe in amen. amen. I am sure that so much has been said about greatness, about being great. I like us to understand the scriptures make us to understand that God is great and so every product of God God has in mind for all of his children to be great all of God's children can be great but not all of God's children will be great it's easy to speak forth and decree and declare and people shout amen if you search from scriptures from the beginning of scriptures to revelation to contemporary times you will see the same pattern of god's great promises desiring that his people become great but unless certain things are imbibed and we live in the light of certain things um greatness may remain a pipe dream before I get into the greatness with God, I'd like us to understand greatness from a general context. Even the world recognizes greatness. Even people who don't know God recognize greatness, describe greatness, pursue greatness. But I'd like us to understand in here tonight that greatness has levels. When you study human history, you study Bible history, you see maybe i need to mention greatness simply talks about making impact doing things that are significant things that affect people you will see through human history there have been people who have been described and regarded as great people who had unusual impacts who had great significance there was a man who in three years he conquered the entire known world his name was called alexander the great he didn't know God, he didn't regard God, he didn't do the things of God. Even though there are prophecies about his coming from scriptures, you find that in Daniel. But then, Alexander did so much that the world around him referred to him as Alexander the Great. Just as Jesus died at the age of 33, Alexander also died at the age of 33. But in those 33 years, he had conquered the entire known world, not the whole world, but the world as it was known in his day not only did he conquer the whole world as known in his day he went about to indoctrinate the whole world to teach them the greek language he was a, a greek man he came from greece and so he imposed the culture the values the language of the um, grecian empire over the entire known world so i'm saying to us on the first level even the world recognizes greatness they looked at Alexander and they called him Alexander the Great. You will see also as we get on here, I like to take us through some scriptures. Not just with Alexander, you will also see how God started to speak to the nation of Israel. Deuteronomy chapter 9 from verse 1 to verse 2. He started to speak to them. He said, listen, as I bring you out of the land of promise and take you into the land I'm taking you into. 
he said i'm not doing these things because you are the greatest of nations he, he said in fact you are the least let's see that deuteronomy chapter 9 from verse 1 to verse 2 hear o israel thou art to pass over jordan this day to go in to possess nations greater and mightier than thyself cities great and fenced up to heaven next verse a people great and tall the children of the anarchists whom thou knowest of whom thou hast heard say who can stand before the children of anarch so you see here nations described as great people described as great tribes described as great the anarchists here were regarded as great but then the question is is it every greatness a child of god should pursue alexander was great he killed people he fought battles he had wars he oppressed people but he was regarded as great um here the anakims they were long necks gigantic beings they were released by the devil into territories god had promised abraham concerning the children of israel and they are regarded here even according to scriptures as great i like us to understand here tonight there is greatness according to society when people make money they are regarded as great when they have buildings they are regarded as great when they have fame they are regarded as great but you see for us as children of god greatness as defined by god is such impact such significance such a life that has relevance in the sight of god it's not enough to make money people make money people who don't know god make money build houses travel nations have vehicles exotic vehicles have wealth in stupendous measure gaddafi is regarded in current history to have is valued at about 300 billion dollars about 200 billion dollars that is more than double the richest man currently in the world is regarded to have so gaddafi in some quarters is regarded as great but you see gaddafi has no bearing in the things of god has no relevance in the kingdom of god made no impact with regard to advancing god's kingdom so it is very important we understand as we get on here tonight that you don't just seek greatness in the name of greatness you don't just embrace the world's valuation and understanding of greatness seek greatness as god regards greatness hallelujah and i'd like us to understand here tonight god also has his opinion of greatness god has his perspective of greatness when john the baptist was to be born he said this one in luke chapter 1 from verse 13 to verse 17 he started to prophesy to zechariah the father of uh, the i mean eventual father of john the baptist he said listen this child i'm giving you you don't need to be afraid i'm going to give you a son i've heard your prayers he said he shall be great in the sight of god there are people who are great in the sight of men great in the sight of kings great on the uh, uh, according to the measures of the of, of the of, of the cultures of the earth but for john the baptist god said i regard this one as great but his greatness may not be according to human measure and we'll be looking to that in a moment you will see also concerning jesus just six months after the birth of john the baptist had been prophesied you will see also the same angel luke chapter 1 going on to visit with the mother of jesus mary luke chapter 1 from verse 26 to verse 33 and amongst other things in that passage you will see god referring to jesus again his coming his work his function he said he shall be great in the sight of the lord so being great seeking greatness is not a problem the problem may be your definition your perspective your understanding of greatness sometimes people feel once i have money if i can have a billion cities if i can be valued at a billion cities if i can build houses build house in accra build house in the most exotic portions of ghana build have a house in england have a house in america people will regard me as great but listen to me the, it is a tragedy for a man to be born have the opportunity to be born into the world to grow up to know life to be well educated to have a wife to have a child or to have children make money become influential and yet such a man never really scratched the surface of god's perspective of greatness 
I like to challenge someone in here tonight in case you think all about all your life is about let me make money let me have a wife let me have houses I want you to know sometimes we feel for people who are poor who are struggling CEM is a ministry that is greatly driven towards supporting the less privileged, supporting the poor. We show concern towards them. We empathize um, for them. We desire to stand with them. We spend millions of dollars to stand with the poor, with the neglected, with the disabled, with the abandoned in the society. And that is great. Many a times we feel for people who are hopeless and in such conditions. And we feel, oh, these ones are not great. These ones can never attain to greatness. But you see, I'd like you to understand, men may look at people because they don't have material things. They don't have physical things. They don't have social things. And regard that because of those things, they're not great. But heaven sees whether you are rich or poor, whether you are male or female, whether you are famous or obscure, a man who does not comprehend God's purpose for his life is the one who has been disconnected from divine greatness. I'd like us to understand two things I want to leave us with tonight about greatness. Greatness, as far as God is concerned, is that first of all, you comprehend his purpose for your life. Why were you born? Why are you the way you are? Why do you have the perspectives you have? Why are you driven in the way you are driven? Greatness, one major factor towards greatness. Greatness, I'm recognizing the kingdom because I've explained that there, are, there is greatness by man, greatness by scholarship, greatness by education, greatness by money, greatness by fame. But greatness in the sight of God is not even measured by any of those things greatness by god is measured to start with by a comprehension of your divine purpose the reason why god sent you into the world you may have been born as an unwanted pregnancy you may have been born out of wedlock you might have been born into a loving family you might have been born into an educated family you might have been born into wealth it matters nothing unless you comprehend heaven's purpose for your life and you begin to see as god described people as great he described abraham as great he described moses the scriptures described moses as great the scriptures prophesied about the coming of jesus as that he will be great john the baptist that he will be great joseph became great paul became great when you study all the people referred to in scriptures described by god as being great to start with, there were people who came to comprehend God's plan for their lives. Hallelujah. Let me ask someone close to you, what is God's plan for your life? What are you chasing? What is your life about? What is heaven's purpose for your life? Not to comprehend heaven's purpose is to disconnect from heaven's agenda of greatness. Having money is good, but what you do with the money is what connects you into the pathway of greatness having children is good having fame is good having popularity having wealth is good but the things you have is nothing until you begin to determine how those things are used to the glory of god that is the true measure of greatness what is it to God when God blesses a man with so much wealth? We've seen them in our nation. I'm sure you have some of such in this nation. When God blesses a man with wealth, so much fame, so much power. And instead of using those things to recognize God, to promote God, to exalt God, such a man, the more the wealth comes, the more he lavishes it on himself. Thank God for Reverend Steve. Thank God for CEM. I mean, I was discussing with Reverend yesterday and he said, listen, God has already given me a house. God has, I have enough vehicles. He said, all my life now is geared towards helping the poor. It's geared towards supporting the less privileged. Those things really challenge me. I, I looked at a man who has discovered heaven's purpose for his life. You shouldn't be under such a mantle. You shouldn't be such, uh, under such a calling, such a grace, such a manifestation of God's calling, and you lose your identity with regard to God's purpose for your life. May you discover purpose in this season. As you wait on the Lord in this period, may you discover heaven's purpose for your life in Jesus' name. My parents sent me to school. I studied electrical engineering. 
but towards the end of my time in school i started to comprehend some other things about my life i realized that engineering was not really god's plan for me i realized that this pathway was heaven's assignment for me and i started to realize even about the life of jesus as he came across people he came across tax collectors he came across fishermen he came across prostitutes he came across thieves as he encamp brought encounters into their lives he started to show them that look whatever the society has used to describe you whatever the society has used to label you is immaterial this is my plan for your life you will see with peter with james with john those early disciples they were fishers of men some of them were rich some of them were struggling like peter and andrew but jesus called them and said come follow me and i will make you fishers of men they were fulfilled to a level like james and john but jesus had a greater plan heaven had a greater plan for them and until they walked in that path inner fulfillment and pathway to greatness could not be connected in their lives i speak to someone in here tonight may you discover your purpose the beginning of greatness for you is the discovery of your divine purpose may you divine your divine purpose may you discover the reason why you are the way you are may you discover the reason why god sent you into the world can i have a believing amen in the house hallelujah all right thank you sir all right, I mentioned to us here, true greatness is having relevance with God and his kingdom. Abraham had relevance with God and his kingdom. Ephraim and Manasseh, they were born, their grandfather prophesied mightily into their lives. Manasseh had all, and Ephraim had all the resources to be great according to natural order. But you see, he never really walked in the light of heaven's agenda for his life. And so a great agenda, you will see Osir describing Ephraim, a, a cake not well torn, a cake burnt on one side. Uh, Ephraim has mixed himself with fools. Why? Because great prophecies went over his life, a great vision over his life, but he never really comprehended. He never really walked in the light of that great agenda for his life. And I speak into your life one more time tonight. May you discover purpose. May you discover heaven's purpose for your life. Can I have a believing amen in the house? Yeah. All right. So, you want to be great? You want to walk in divine greatness? A discovery of divine purpose. Hallelujah. All right. I like to also say this here. Sometimes we feel, oh, I was born poor. That's why I'm disadvantaged. I didn't go to school. That's why I'm disadvantaged. But you see, those are natural, societal, circumstantial measures. Every human being born of God, every human being sent into the world was given at least a gift with which he can shine and become great in life. Whether you are born poor or you are born rich. Whether you are born into a famous family or you are born into a destitute home every human being has inside of him or her a divine gift we call them talents we call them natural gifts but they do not get in there by your parents or by the environment god put those talents in there hallelujah so that the environment or the lack or raised in an orphanage does not limit the level of greatness you can have in life god has put within you everything you need to become great in life that is why you see some people they have academic talents with least reading i entered university almost 35 years ago then i met this young man we have engineering math class and then when the professor writes some things on the board i'm still trying to write my brain how do we move from step one to step two he just sees all the five steps and gives the answer just casual i used to wonder what kind of a human being is this I never saw him in the school library in university until year four of our five-year program. He would just sit down on his bed and read casually like he was reading a magazine. And so eventually he was the best graduating student in my set. He was a man of unusual academic ability. But I was also told later on that he had a younger sister who was in the school of medicine that if they have 15 courses 
the sister alone will first of all pack 13 prizes for herself and then struggling to collect the remaining two with the other people in the class i mean unusual the dad like that the siblings like that and then i recognize that some of this thing is not by power or by might they are for some people they have far above average academic talent for some people it's not in the academic field it's in the area of sports even if you train five hours every day to run 100 meters some people is just naturally in them to be able to run 100 meters and win medals so for some people it's in the area of sports for some people it's in the area of running for some people it's in the area of football for some people it's in the area of singing for some people they cannot sing but it's in the area of music production they are they they don't have the voice but they have the brain how to put together the music post-production editing what i'm saying is if you look to your into your society you see some people born into poor homes born into non homes of non-entities but through some of those natural talents that they discovered they became outstanding they became celebrities they are on the faces of a, of adverts on our billboards why because god recognizes that everyone will not be born into a rich family everyone will not be able to go to school some may be orphans some may be destitute but he implanted inside every human being a gift or what we call a talent some have three some have four some have several some everything they do they are outstanding there was another young man he was my younger brother's classmate in secondary school he met me in university this guy he was he had the best results in his set academically mechanical engineering and then he was a sportsman he could play table tennis he played football for the school when he was in year three out of a year five program i mean five year program he passed i can i mean an engineering undergraduate passing i can so you could see the guy he was just multi-gifted multi-talented and multitasking i'm saying to us in here every human being has in him or her a gift or a talent that can position you towards greatness but you know what when you connect that see that that gift that talent with god who implanted in you it begins to show you how with that gift you can become great in life hallelujah because some discover their gifts but they did not connect it with the giver of the gift they became great according to society but they never became great according to god you see someone like michael jackson now who is late he became profound he sold his record in hundreds of millions of copies but you know what he was great according to society he was great according to human dictionary but he was never great according to heaven's agenda so i've shown us here the difference don't just seek greatness according to society seek greatness that long after your time is over heaven will be celebrating you may you become great may you be great in the sight of god may you become great in the sight of god and you see when you connect your gifts your talents with the giver of the gifts god will begin to show you how with those gifts you can navigate your way into greatness hallelujah a second thing i'd like to deal with tonight i've shown us a discovery of god's plan for your life is a very principal factor towards greatness but the discovery is not enough closely related to discovering god's plan for your life is a diligent pursuit aggressive passionate focused pursuit of heaven's mandate on your life reverend was sharing with me yesterday morning when i just came in he, he said listen i i am invited for awards everywhere almost every time they say there's one award there's one dinner there's one lunch he said i don't have time for those things show me where the poor show me how i can help them show me how i can support them he said that is where my heart that is what my heart is dedicated to and it made me remember the language of apostle paul he said oh king agrippa i was not disobedient to the heavenly vision he said and for this purpose these jewish guys they seek to kill me what am i saying to us on the second level a second factor towards greatness is a diligent pursuit of that purpose that has been revealed by heaven to you there are many people who come to know this is god's plan for their lives but they feel just by knowing it it will happen no 
Many of us, who, I mean, go to school, but we never really practice the things we learn from school. Many of us come to CEM, we hear great things, we are imparted, hands are laid on us, we hear the deep things of the kingdom, but we seldom practice the things we hear. The Bible says, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. I like to say, the knowledge of the truth is not enough. It is the practice of the knowledge of the truth that will set you free and make you fulfill destiny. There are many people in here, hallelujah, many people in here We come service to service, program to program, conference to conference. We write the notes, we buy the tapes, we listen in the car, we listen at home. But when it comes to the practicing, we are nowhere to be found. And I'm challenging you here. All that is needed. That is why I started with that statement tonight. That God can make all of his children great. God wants to make all of his children great. But eventually, not all of God's children will turn out to be great. Why? Because, like I've mentioned earlier on, some don't even know God's plan for their lives. And on a second level, some know it, but don't pay the price for its performance. It is not enough to know what God will have you to do. You will see, and I will close with that passage from 1 Corinthians chapter 10. The Bible talks of the church in the wilderness. They were regarded as the church in the wilderness. By, I mean, according to Acts chapter 7. They were given all the resources for greatness. All the training for greatness. All the materials for greatness. But eventually, with most of them, God was not well pleased. Let's see 1 Corinthians chapter 10 as we get on here. 1 Corinthians and chapter 10. Are you there in 1 Corinthians chapter 10? I read from verse 1 to verse 12 quickly. Moreover, brethren, so this is a challenge to the church, to brothers and sisters in Christ. I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. All were baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And all did eat the same spiritual meat. Faster please. And did all drink the same spiritual drink. For the drink of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. Verse 5. He said but with many of them. And I will explain it further. With most of them. God was not well pleased. For they were overthrown in the wilderness. But now these things were our examples. Somebody said, they are my examples. Say to yourself, they are my examples. He said, now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lost after evil things as they also lost it. Neither be idolaters as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Faster brother or sister. Verse 9. Verse 9. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Faster, we're going to verse 12. Verse, okay. Neither momo ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Please get on, get on, get on, get on, get on. I hope the fasting is not affecting you. Now these things happen unto them for examples. And they were written for our, somebody say for my admonition. Say to yourself, these things are written for my admonition. Upon whom the ends of the world are come. Last verse, verse 12. Wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth, take heed, lest he fall. You will see with this church here, when you read Acts chapter 7, verse 38 in particular, this church was, these people were regarded as the church in the wilderness. They were given great trainings. They were given great resources. They were given great opportunities. Things that will make them turn out great. Let me highlight those things here, five of them. Resources for greatness that these people received. You will see here, the Bible says, they were all under the cloud. That talks about that divine presence that followed them by day and by night. 
that guided them by day and by night they were all under the cloud furthermore number two they all passed through the sea meaning the sea that overwhelmed pharaoh and his warriors was the same sea that became a passageway for them that talks about divine preservation divine protection the whole nation furthermore number three he said all were baptized unto moses baptized unto moses was not that each of them was being put inside moses that was not possible it was simply talking about the doctrines the teachings moses brought to them so you are talking about divine instruction furthermore number four all were on i mean all ate the same spiritual meat this is simply talking about divine revelations divine food for god's household in time number five all drank of the same drink and he said that drink they drank of was the rock that was christ that is talking about the revelation of jesus now listen to this they were instructed they carried divine presence they had divine protection they contacted the revelation of christ these were all they needed to become great in their lives but you see the bible says in that passage with many of them god was not well pleased what if a people can be brought out with such a mighty hand with great miracles their masters tried to chase after them and they were all killed in the same red sea and these people came out yet they could not get into the land of promise it can happen to any child of god over two million people came out of egypt as the children of god when god brought them out of egypt his mind was to take them through the wilderness into the land of promise but you know what only two of the adults of that generation in egypt got to the land of promise who says prophesying is enough for greatness who says coming to church is enough for greatness who says the revelation of jesus is enough for greatness this church in this passage they had all these things and yet they wasted them and how did they waste them another five at least from that passage here he said but with many of them god was not well pleased so they were overthrown in the wilderness and what things did they get into number one they got into lost you want to be great i mean i someone close to you you want to be great ah, you're quiet now <laughs> and me as someone close to you do you want to be great do you want divine greatness avoid lost loss is not just about sexual issues loss is about carnal desires that are not good in the sight of god he said many of them lost it he said for you beware because many of them were destroyed because of loss when you desire things carnally things that don't have the seal of god things that don't carry the signature of god they become things that can take you away from the greatness god has designed for you he said in this passage he said many of he said now these things are examples to the intent that we should not lost let me turn this on close to you do not get involved in lost don't get involved in carnal desires don't get involved in ungodly desires quickly number two he said do not lost progress thank you sir <laughs> all right so here he said lost another one here he said he warns us about idols i know in african culture the moment you hear about idols you think about maybe something around the waist you think about something that is tied around the fore, i mean upper arm you think about something that is put under the bed that nobody must see i remember at the time growing up i think i was in university in an apartment in an apartment my parents were living in we had a neighbor living in one of the upper apartments and then i was told one of those times i came home from uni about um, my younger siblings that the people upstairs the man of the house in that three bedroom apartment he has a room that nobody enters his wife cannot enter that room none of his and he has warned them the day any one of you tries to enter that room whatever you see and whatever you become is your portion <laughs> now in african culture when we think of idols immediately we think of that but you see basically idols are anything that gets your attention more than god anything you exalt more than god is an idol he said israel hear O israel the lord your god the lord is one and you will worship him with all your heart with all your soul with all your mind with all your strength you see 
some of us, our idols are fashion. I mean, it's fashion. For some of us, our idol is football. The moment you hear Manchester United, Red Devils, uh, Champions League, where's the service? You will not see some people because of Red Devils who want to play Champions League. So anything, for some people is basketball, for some people is jewelry, for some people is fashion, for some people is their looks, for some people is their children. Anything exalted above God can become the same thing that can hinder you from God's destination of greatness for your life. Hallelujah. So these are things to avoid. You want to be great, great by God, avoid lost, avoid idols. Number three from that passage, not just idols, it says here, some of them also are given to sexual sins. Even though the Bible calls it their fornication, whether married or not married or about to be married, sexual sin was the issue there. Sexual sin can cut off the greatness of your destiny. Sexual sins can behead the greatness of your destiny. Sexual sin can become momentary fun, momentary excitement for five minutes, ten minutes, and it takes away a lifetime of greatness from your life people come to church speaking tongues and they go back home with a living lover they are not properly married according to custom according to society they come to church speaking tongues yet they have a living lover brothers who go back to their living lovers sisters ushers musicians who go back to their living lovers these are satanic setups these are landmines of the enemy that God is saying you must know how to pick your way through the landmines of the enemy. Be warned about sexual sins. If you want to be great, sex is not the pathway into divine greatness. I need to mention to us here, as I tell you things up tonight, even within the constituency of the church now, we have ministers who cannot come to minister unless they have slept with a woman who is not their wife. They may become great. Their names may be popular all over the place. They may command thousands in their churches. But that is not greatness as designed by God. Those are not things that are reckoned with by God in eternity. I challenge you in here. You have a glorious future. You have a great destiny. No matter who you are. No matter. The, the terrible background cannot hinder you of that great future. A life in an orphanage cannot hinder you of that great future. But if you are knowledgeable in the purpose of God and you compromise on the altar of sexual sin, you can disconnect yourself from that great assignment God has in mind for you. And not just sexual sins here, number four quickly, it talks about temptations. The temptations here is not necessarily, I mean, um, the temptations that come to us, maybe tempted by money, tempted by position in the office, but much more we tempting God. Jesus had just prayed and fasted, extended, like we're doing in this house, over these 14 days. After 40 days, the enemy, the devil came to him and told him, if you are the son of God, jump down from this height. Because he will send his angels. And you know what Jesus said? You will not tempt the Lord your God. That was pathway to greatness for him. He could have done anything. He had the power to do anything. But he will not try to tempt God to prove his status as a child of God. Likewise for every one of us. I want to challenge us in here. Don't get into things. That, to tempt God is to do things that you know are wrong in the sight of God. In hope that God will just overlook it. You know that this thing is wrong. You know that you have received a thousand CDs. 100 CDs belong to God. But I say it doesn't matter. Is it 100 CDs that God will spend? Hey, let me just spend this. Even the whole 1,000 CD is not enough for my responsibilities. If I eat this tithe, God will overlook it. That is tempting God. When God says, I blessed you so that you become a blessing. I'm raising you as a financial pillar, pillar in my house so that you can be a blessing, so that you can support missions, so that you can support the helpless, so that you can reach out the day. I mean, what was that day called, sir, in August? A day of hell. So it is not every one of us who will be able to do some great things towards the day of hell. But God empowers some people. That is their destiny. That is their calling. That is their gifting. That is the pathway to their greatness. To take substantially. To take sacrificially. We'll be looking more into that tomorrow. 
towards the day of help. But when you are trying to write that check, you are looking at what your neighbor is giving. I said, since mom, a whole Mama Jane is giving 1,000 CDs, why should I give 100,000 CDs? And then you say, I should not be giving up to my mama. Let me give just 500 CDs. <laughs> when God has given you maybe times 1,000 of what God has given her, that is tempting God. We have many believers like that. We tempt God. We say anything to get promotion in the office. And your boss says, just one visit to the hotel. Let's go to the hotel together. You will get that promotion letter by tomorrow. He said, once I get this promotion letter, the first salary will be first fruit on the altar. That is tempting God. God is not in need of your money as much as in need of your obedience. He said to obey is better than sacrifice. And to hearken than the fat of rams. What am I saying to us in here? Many people tempted God in that church in the wilderness. And they were not able to come into the greatness of the land of promise. May you enter your land of promise. <laughs> land of promise is not heaven. Land of promise is that place of destiny fulfillment. Making impact. Having significance. Your significance may just be to a street. Your significance may just be to your children. Your significance may just be to the local church. Your significance may just be to your company. But it will resonate in your heart that for this cause I was born. For this reason I came into the world. May you fulfill destiny. May you pursue destiny. May you perform destiny. May you find greatness in your pursuit of destiny. Can I have a believing amen? amen? And not just tempting God. And then there were murmurers. Those who murmur, why should God give? That woman did not even come for 14 days of praying and fasting. She came only for the last two days. Why should God give us something that big and God has not given it to me? Who are you to play God over other people's destinies? That is murmuring. Let me ask someone close to you, who are you? <laughs> Hallelujah. So you find believers murmuring. And when we get into murmuring, we murmur about other people's lifting. We murmur about other people's life partners. We murmur about other people's children. We wonder why everything is happening to others. Why is it not happening to us first? The question again is, who are you? Why do you think it should happen to you first? Why do you think everything should come to you first? Why do you think the blessings should come to you first? God does according as it pleases him. The least we can do is to show gratitude that he even looks in our direction. But the Bible says here, many murmured and because of that, they were not able to enter their land of promise. For you, you will not murmur. For you, you will not be tempted. For you, you will not, you will not tempt God. For you, you will not get into sexual sins. For you, you will not compromise your faith. You will walk in the path of destiny in the name of Jesus. The Bible tells us about Jesus the angel Gabriel prophesied to the mom. He said, this, this boy, he will be great in the sight of God. He will sit over the throne of his father David. Of the increase of his kingdom, there shall be no end. And Jesus came into the world. And all of his mind was to pursue that agenda for his life. The, a time came when he fed people with bread. Fed people supernaturally. John chapter 6. The Bible says the people gathered to make him a king. And he saw that being made a king by men was not heaven's agenda for him. Was not the pathway to greatness. Even though it was societal recognition, societal elevation, the Bible says Jesus escaped from that place. In another place in Luke chapter 13, the, his disciples told him, Do you know Herod is seeking your life to kill you lately? He said, go and tell that fox, I do chaos today and tomorrow. On the third day I shall be perfected. I see two things here that run contrary to popular opinion. In one place, people wanted to promote him. He said, I don't want that. He ran away from it. In another place, a king wanted to kill him. He said, that is my pathway into destiny. That is what God has revealed to me as my pathway into greatness. How many of us will know that problem is waiting for us in a place? A challenge is waiting for us in a place and we are still willing to go there sometimes going through that challenge is your pathway to greatness the bible says when jesus was obedient to the death of the cross he said for this purpose god had also highly exalted him he could not be exalted until he was crucified until men lifted him and put him on the cross god could not lift him and give him a name that was above every name i'm saying to you here that challenges are in that office are not enough signs to run from there that victory 
blessings are in that place are not enough signs that you will seek and throw men there i'm saying locate god's plan for your life locate god's purpose for your life yield yourself to it commit your energy to it reverend steve here has committed himself passionately to the less privileged from community to community across ghana across africa to the nations of the earth he finds his fulfillment there whether people celebrate him or not whether his name is on billboards or not that is his fulfillment and i look at reverend stanley also and i marvel at his commitment to god that a man can find his vision his destiny within helping his brother his age mate to find the fulfillment for the heavenly vision on his life friends that is a man on a heavenly vision that is a man on a template on greatness according to heaven men may say oh see this man you know even sabi if for god do it he will have gone to do his own he will have had a big congregation with this way he can sing he can teach he can minister powerfully let him go and do his own thing that is according to human opinion many of us one moses gave a vision to a whole nation aaron was his elder brother yet aaron's destiny for greatness was just in being a mouthpiece for moses i'm saying to you in here drop some of these worldly parameters for greatness i'm saying to someone in here some of these pursuits that we're engaging is it biblical is it according to god's word is it according to god's will you can be great all of your greatness on earth may only be recognized even after your time is over and yet heaven is celebrating well done wife or thou wise and faithful servant enter into the rest of your lord i'm saying to someone in here greatness is beckoning your greatness may be in supporting the less privileged your greatness may be in helping a stranger your greatness may be in taking an orphan home and raising him or her as your own child your greatness may be in standing for the truth in your organization even the most wicked director knows that if i want to know the truth in this office all i need to do is talk to that sister friends greatness is waiting greatness is beckoning may you locate your pathway to greatness may you walk in that pathway to greatness may you may you comprehend heaven's agenda for your greatness may you pursue it diligently in the mighty name of jesus shall we rise to our feet tonight <laughs> lift up your voice and bless his name bless his name bless his name bless his name thank god he has an agenda for your life inside everyone born of god is the seed of greatness is a promise of greatness is a divine plan for greatness but please understand god's greatness for you god's way not social way my parents thought i would be an engineer and become this and become that but god had other things in mind for me it took my my dad several years after school almost 20 years after school before he believed that i have my first son who is a man of god i remember many years ago this was about 10 years after i finished from university he came to his, he retired as a high court judge so he came to my city they had this tribunal election tribunal i was part of it so he came with his colleagues they were in an hotel i went to visit with my wife and he said meet engineer tunji my first son i laughed in my mind engineer for where <laughs> but you know that was what gave him pride that was what made him feel that my son is great i sent him to university to study engineering he is an engineer it took him about 20 years sir before he started calling me pastor hey. about 20 years after i mean about 15 after i left school and over 15 years after i'd already become a pastor before i started hearing my dad calling me a pastor it took him that long but i was already sold out to the heavenly vision Amen. for you it might, it might be pastor for you it might be financier for you it might be footballer for you it might be entertainer for you it might be a comedian but please comprehend heaven's plan for your life use your significance use your impact to please god and advance his kingdom then you are set on the pathway of greatness i'd like you to lift up your voice hallelujah hallelujah i'd like you to lift up your voice tonight and begin to pray for yourself lord help me to comprehend your heavenly vision for my life 
if you have already comprehended it ask God to give you the zeal the tenacity the passion the focus the consistency to pursue that heavenly vision some of us want to do things that are that are highly rated amongst human beings we don't care what God thinks but I believe there will be a change of heart tonight there will be a change of ways tonight what a joy to heaven for a man a woman to locate heaven's plan for his life for her life and to pursue begin to pray for yourself tonight lord help me to comprehend lord help me to pursue lord help me to discover lord help me to perform your plan your purpose for my life lift up your voice and pray Jesus, Lord, help me to comprehend your plan for my life. Lord, help me to pursue, to pursue, to pursue, to pursue the performance of your purpose for my life. Jesus Christ. And so shall it be in Jesus, Jesus name. name. Amen. And so shall it be in Jesus name. Amen. You look at the life of John the Baptist. A man who was de defined by God as born to be great. He will be great in the sight of God. But you know what? As John the Baptist set about comprehending heaven's plan. Pursuing heaven's plan. Right from when he was very young. He was set apart. The Bible says in Luke chapter 1 verse 80, he was in the desert until the day of his showing unto Israel. Desert means deserted place. He was alone in the wilderness. He was eating wild locusts and honey for several years, probably more than two decades of his life. Nobody knew him, probably forgotten and abandoned by parents. But you know, he was seeking heaven's definition of greatness for his life. And the Bible makes us to understand eventually he became the one to reveal the Messiah. He became the one to show the way of the Lord. He became the one who, while the one he introduced was becoming more and more popular, his own popularity was diminishing and yet he did not feel threatened. He said, for he must increase and I must decrease. His ministry was fulfilled that he was able to bring people to locate the Messiah, Jesus. He said, for he must increase and I must decrease. That does not describe greatness according to society. Greatness according to society is that you keep on increasing, you keep on increasing, you keep on increasing. But John the Baptist found his identity simply in pleasing God, simply in doing God's business. It cost him his life, it cost him time in prison, yet in heaven's record, he was not only born to be great, 
he died a great man may you may, may you live for greatness Jesus may you man. live for heaven's greatness Amen. i'd like you to lift up your voice one more time and pray tonight lord help me to be passionate help me to be focused help me to be driven for heaven's definition of greatness for my life lift up your voice and take that prayer again to Jesus Christ and so shall it be in jesus name before i take my seat i want to speak over someone's life in here grace will flow to you a new season a new level of living will come into operation in your life i speak into your life tonight everything that has entangled you yoked you catch you away from god's pathway to greatness may those yokes be destroyed jesus he said it shall come to pass in that day even in this day that the body shall be lifted up your shoulders and the yoke shall be destroyed from off your neck for the yoke is destroyed by reason of the anointing i speak according to the calling and grace of god on my life everything that has disconnected you everything that has distracted you everything that has derailed you from god's pathway for your greatness may such things be destroyed right now may you connect with heaven's supply may you connect with heaven's greatness may you connect with heaven's greatness may you comprehend heaven's greatness may you pursue heaven's greatness may you perform heaven's greatness in the name of jesus may you be for signs and for wonders jesus a new day birthed in your life may you begin to see opportunities in a new light may you begin to see challenges in a new light in the name of jesus as you go from this atmosphere tonight the scales from off your eyes may they drop jesus may you see the lord clearly may you see his plan clearly may you receive grace for its performance in the name of jesus Paul asked Jesus on the way to Damascus two critical questions when Jesus appeared to him he said who are you Lord so the revelation of Christ became the revelation of his purpose because close to that question he said what will you have me to do and I believe every single one of us should get answers to those two questions in our lives who is Jesus to you he said who are you lord and secondly he said what will you have me to do and that is god's purpose for your life and that is god's plan for your life it may be in the area of giving it may be in the area of service it may be in the area of sacrifice we'll look more into those things tomorrow but i speak into your lives tonight receive grace in the name of jesus grace to perform heaven's agenda grace to pursue heaven's purpose for your life in the name of jesus may you become a city changer amen may you become an influencer of destinies may you become a helper of the helpless in the name of jesus if you believe that means shout a believing amen Amen. please take your seat one more thing i want to raise a special offering tonight and i'm simply raising this offering for the crusade the missions work we are going for in cote d'ivoire When you study third John, it's just one chapter, you see there how John the apostle started to commend the church that gave themselves generously to the people who went to the mission fields. He said because on the mission fields, they could not receive gifts from the Gentiles. How does that apply to us? There is nowhere Christ to the rural world goes where that rural world can supply all the needs for footing the bill. I hope you hear that there is no community in any nation where we take christ to the rural world where the people of those rural communities can give to be able to f- support or f- foot the budget for such crusades so it takes believers like us go home and study third john just one chapter it takes believers like us standing with the servant of god standing with the heavenly vision to give cheerfully to give willingly to give sacrificially 
so that when we go there, we are not distracted by any budget, any part of the budget, whether for hotels or for medical bills or for transportation or for logistics or for the things we want to give to these less privileged people in these communities. I want us to give an offering tonight. I know you have been giving since the beginning of the year. I know this crusade ought to have helped long before now. But it is never enough. Let us come to the dimension like in Exodus. When the people gave until the people had to tell Moses, please compel the people to stop giving. We have more than enough to carry out what God has sent us to build. Shall we take an offering tonight? Towards the mission's work we are going to hold in Cote d'Ivoire. I'd like you to give some of us, God has given us a special grace, a special gift, a special divine enabling to give far above what other people can give put together. Your obedience and pathway towards greatness is simply in obeying heaven's vision for your life. Oh, Hallelujah. Can I have an envelope please? I'd like you to give cheerfully, give sacrificially, give not holding back. Let's honor the Lord with a special giving towards the Cote d'Ivoire mission work. I will trust in you. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the giving of your people tonight always a privilege to give to worthy causes charitable causes to give to people who cannot give us in return other than to pray for us and ask for the blessing of the lord upon us lord i ask for all the cheerful willing sacrificial givers in the house giving towards the ivory coast mission walk christ to the rural world in cote d'ivoire lord i ask that lord you receive our offerings as you received abel's offerings and you delighted in him and you respected Abel and you respected his offering that you will find in this gathering tonight people who give like Abel cheerfully respectfully honorably to godly causes and Lord as we give to your cause we ask that you give back to us press down shaking together running over cause men cause the kings of the earth to give to us in the mighty name of Jesus we thank you father for answer prayers because we are praying in Jesus' name. And the people of God shout a believing amen.